This is ABC News Nightline. Reporting from Washington, Ted Koppel. Good evening. Our focus tonight is not quite the argument you're accustomed to hearing. The basic question is still, as it has always been, the propriety, ethical, legal, moral, of abortion. There is still the battle between, to use their own favorite phrases, the pro-life and the pro-choice people. But there is a relatively new and sometimes very nasty aspect to the debate. It's difficult to assign blame, specific blame that is, but there have been a great many acts of violence against abortion clinics. Faye Waddleton, the president of Planned Parenthood, points out that there has been so much violent rhetoric directed against doctors who perform abortions, calling them murderers, for example, that the rhetoric has spawned a certain violent activism. Here's correspondent Peter Lance. The Planned Parenthood Clinic in St. Paul, Minnesota. Arson. The Concerned Women's Clinic in Cleveland, Ohio. Arson. The Pregnancy Control Clinic in Fort Worth, Texas. Arson. And the Bread and Roses Clinic in Clearwater, Florida. Arson. Since 1977, at least 27 abortion clinics have been the scene of bomb threats, fire bombings, or arson fires. Another 52 clinics have been broken into or vandalized. Abortion has always been a controversial practice in this country. Now it is fast becoming a dangerous practice as well. August 12, 1982, an abandoned ammunition bunker in Iliopolis, Illinois. Abortion doctor Hector Zavalos and his wife are held captive. The three kidnappers call themselves the Army of God. They threaten to kill the couple if their demands are not met. The FBI is very much interested in establishing contact with the abductors of the Zavalos's so that we might discuss their safe release. Your demands can be discussed, but we must establish contact. The kidnappers did establish contact, directing police to the chimney in a men's room of a nearby park. Inside the chimney, police found this, a rambling 43-page series of letters or epistles called Decrees of God. One epistle directed at President Reagan said, quote, I, God, now tell you plainly and bluntly, put an end to legalized abortion in 48 hours, even if need be that you put everyone who supports unborn baby killing to death. On the Zavala's kidnapping, National Right to Life condemns what was done. We knew nothing about it. We do not in any way approve. National Right to Life Committee condemned the kidnapping. But in Granite City, a local Right to Life leader took a different view. Why should there be so much concern over these two and so little about all the unborn babies, the babies that are murdered? On August 20th, eight days after they were kidnapped, the Zavalos were released unharmed. The Army of God is still at large. The kidnapping of Dr. Zavalos and his wife and their imprisonment here represented just the latest in a wave of crime and violence to sweep abortion clinics in the past four years. Don't be a part of the killing operation. Don't kill your baby. These right-to-lifers are using another tactic to stop abortion. Every Saturday, they stand outside this clinic and try to prevent women from going inside. Don't take a course you can't reverse. Don't be involved in killing your own child. If you had a little window there in your body, you could see that baby. You couldn't walk in the clinic. The right to lifers knew that we were taping them. What they didn't know was that two of the women were from ABC News. Don't have this abortion, at least not now. Okay. Your conscience is, is stirred up. We're in a situation where if we don't reach this woman, she's going to kill another human being. And if you put yourself in a situation like that, fraught with electricity and tension, Anything can look like harassment. As the anti-abortion movement passed from peaceful protest to sit-ins to direct actions at clinics, it also became associated with violence. The most recent act of violence came just three weeks ago, when someone broke into the San Francisco Planned Parenthood office and did $5,000 worth of damage. Confidential patient files were scattered everywhere. It appears to look like there were people who were against abortion who were at the root of this. Vandalism is one thing. Fire is something else. 
In addition to the arson fires in St. Paul, Cleveland, and Fort Worth, other abortion clinics have been either bombed or set on fire in Hempstead, New York, St. Petersburg, Florida, and Falls Church, Virginia. Our problem is that these are individual people who are reacting in probably very emotional ways to having been uh, terribly upset by the violence that is going on inside of those places. After the Zavala's kidnapping, evidence has surfaced of at least one national conspiracy to commit acts of violence against clinics. In these epistles obtained by ABC News, the Army of God has taken credit for at least three separate clinic attacks. This one in Clearwater, Florida on May 31st. This one in St. Petersburg, Florida the same day. And this pipe bombing in Falls Church, Virginia on June 6th. 